regret that my wife is not with me. But uh, she is playing naughty. <laughs> See, y'all are in Mexico District, right? So you might not be aware that Holiday Youth Convention is going on. Uh, amen. Uh, last night, tonight, and uh, so Wednesday, my wife met our son in Lufkin and got our grandson, and uh, he is uh, in chamber with my wife. Right? And uh, I guess sometime tomorrow he'll get back with his parents. But uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we took him home uh, here a while back uh, to Beaumont, and uh, um, we were going to get back in the car and go somewhere to eat before we left to come back to Chandler. And so we did that, and when the car, we, we still had his car seat in our car. And, so we put him in the car, and he said, bye, Daddy. <laughs> he was like, all right, I've seen you for a little while. Here we go. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're, we're glad that he likes to come stay with Papa and not. Uh, yeah. uh, Matthew chapter 3. beginning with verse number one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then also in Mark chapter one, <coughs> And verse number 14. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's just pray. I'll let you be seated. God, we love you tonight. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy, your goodness toward us. And we thank you, God, for this privilege. Lord, that we may want to come to the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the worship, the singing, the praise. And God, we thank you for your word right now. We pray, Lord, that you would enlighten us, touch us by your word tonight. I pray, God, that we would be strengthened, Lord, that we would be affected by your word. Let that anointing, God, rest upon us. I pray in the name of Jesus, we want your will to be accomplished. Amen, amen, amen. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord one more time. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm going to uh, use some scriptures tonight in addition to what I read. And I'm going to go back first to Genesis chapter 6 
Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Was only evil continually. All right. And it repented yeah. the Lord yeah. that he had made man on earth and it grieved him at his heart. Amen. Now, as you can tell probably by the scriptures that I have read tonight, and I'll read some more, uh, I'm simply just going to talk about repentance. Amen. Um, we find out early in the Word of God, just like I read just in uh, Genesis there, that what we're facing today is nothing new. Amen. Because it is plain to see and we understand from the Word of God that uh, there has always been a need of repentance ever since uh, the fall in the Garden of Eden there has been a need of repentance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And repentance is something that every creature needs. Every human being needs. You don't ever get good enough that you don't need repentance. Amen. I mean, we have, we have sung and we have worshiped we have clapped our hands. Uh, there's been a little bit of uh, shouting that's been going on. All right. We have given uh, an offering and tithe unto the Lord, and, and we've lifted our hands, and we've, we've clapped our hands unto the Lord, and we've worshiped. We've exalted Him. But sometime in the next few days, you're going to need to repent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. And I want to say from the outset tonight that I thank God for repentance. Yes, sir. I, do. Thank you. I said I thank God for repentance. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for the privilege to be able to repent before God. Hallelujah. And there's one thing about repentance. Repentance gets results. Yes, it does. I said repentance gets results. Yes, yes, sir. Hallelujah. And that's why everybody needs it. Yes, that's right. yes, man. Praise God. So, so we find out that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of ironic uh, and it's a little unusual to understand that God repented. All right. Because when he saw his creation right. uh -huh. and he saw the wickedness that was going on yes, and he knew that he was reaching the point yeah. that he couldn't put up with it. All right. Come on. Yes. And God was sorry. Yeah. It repented the Lord that he had created man. Amen. That's the word. Yes. And so because of that, God decided that he was going to destroy everything. All right. Yes, sir. He was going to wipe it all off. Yeah. I don't know if he even had intentions of starting over. All right. Yeah. The only verse that we have in the Word of God that, that points in the direction and the reason that we're here tonight is the verse that said, but Noah found grace yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. If Noah had to found grace in the eyes of the Lord, we wouldn't be here tonight. All right, all right, come on. Right. The wickedness that was going on in the days of Noah would 
was stopped at that point. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so what did God do? God told Noah. He gave him instructions about building an ark. He told Noah that was destruction was coming upon the earth. He, he told him why he was going to do it. And he said, this is the way out. And so because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Noah began to preach righteousness. All right. Noah began to prepare the ark as God had instructed. And as Noah was building, Noah was preaching. And Noah would work. And Noah would preach. Now, can you imagine what that was like? Because Noah was talking about something that uh, people were not familiar with. He was saying that rain was going to come upon the earth, that there was going to be a flood, and they didn't even know what rain was. Yeah. Just like today, we preach about a rapture yeah. or a taking away that's going to happen yeah. to the church of the living God. And it's never happened before. Right. And a lot of people don't believe it. All right. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But just the same, Noah did what God told him to do. Right. And Noah preached. Right. And he was trying to get people to turn around. From their wicked ways. He was trying to get them to repent. Right. Come on. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. Uh -huh. But nobody listened. And no. all of those years, over a hundred years, Noah worked and he preached and he was a man of righteousness and he was doing what God wanted him to do. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then all of a sudden, it came the day that uh, God started, uh, by his spirit, the animals started coming into the ark. And then uh, when all of that was done, uh, the Lord told Noah, says, get your family in the ark. All right. Amen. All right. And out of all those years of preaching, uh -huh. out of all of the words that were spoken, out of all the pleading, Eight people were saved. Noah, his wife, their three sons and their wives. Right. Eight people. Hallelujah. But do you know how things could have been different? Things could have been a lot different if people would have repented. I said if people would have just heeded, uh, know what Noah was saying, uh, if they would have called out unto God, uh, if they would have repented uh, and turned from their wickedness, uh, God would have heard them. Amen. Amen. But they turned a deaf ear to it. They said, oh, that's just a bunch of junk. We don't believe you, old man. But then when God told him to get in the ark, the scripture says that God shut the door. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. 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 And I don't know, I, I guess maybe it's accurate, but I read that Bible historians say that during the days of Noah that there was approximately 250 million people that lived on earth. Now you think about that. Yeah. The United States of America today is a little over 300 million people. And eight souls were saved in the days of Noah. Why? Because they wouldn't repent. Amen. I said they wouldn't repent. Hallelujah. Yeah. We read in the book of Daniel. I mean in the book of Jonah. 
that God gave instructions to Jonah to go down to Nineveh. Yeah. That once again, God was going to do something that he really didn't want to do. Right. And he was sending a preacher, a preacher to preach to him and tell him to repent. Right. But what happened in Nineveh? In Nineveh, it was a little bit different story. Yeah. From the king all the way down. Yes, sir. They put on sackcloth. They fasted. And they repented. And God heard their prayer. Yes. And turned from what he intended to do. That's it. Yes, Amen. So repentance works. Yes, I said repentance works. Yes, it does. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If people would just learn to repent. I said if they would just learn to repent. Hallelujah. Amen. We find the story of Abraham and Lot. Also found in the book of Genesis. Amen. Abraham and Lot. They had so much substance between the two of them that they had to separate. Amen. And Abraham gave Lot the choice of the land. And in Genesis chapter 13 and 12, it says that Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Amen. And Sodom was a wicked place. Now, Lot didn't go there right off the start. No. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. Uh -huh. Amen. And the next thing you know, Lot's getting a little bit closer to the wickedness. And before it's all said and done, Lot and his family are engulfed and surrounded by the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then in, in chapter 18, we find that God is sharing with Abraham what he's going to do. That he's going to destroy Sodom. Yeah. And Abraham begins to bargain with God. Right. And he asks God, he says, would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Right. And God just suppose there's 50 righteous people there. God said, if there's 50, I won't do it. Right. Then Abraham begins to bargain some more and says, well, uh, how about if there's just 45? Yeah. Well, if there's 45, I won't do it. Okay, God, well, what, what about if there's just 40? Yeah. Uh -huh. And they kept on bargaining all the way to finally Abraham said, now, God, I, I don't want you to get put out with me, but what, what about if there's just 10? And God said, for ten's sake, if there's ten there, I won't destroy it. But we know. We know what happened. Hallelujah. In the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was not ten righteous people. Amen. But do you know what would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah? Repentance. Heart felt repentance. Amen. Repentance would have done the job. Repentance would have held off the, 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 the destruction that God was bringing to the place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. What is unbelievable about the about the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is the wickedness that God sent angels in there to get Lot and his family. What was the main